it is the epitome of piling on when the club are going through any type of hardship and it makes me wonder at times is there actually a media narrative out there that is pro some clubs and anti other clubs this video is being sponsored by our friends at Spitch the best fantasy football manager game on the app store bar none why is it the best you don't have to commit to an entire season you can play individual game weeks if you want choosing a brand new team every single weekend right now there's a new season mode where you can win up to fifty thousand pound and there's even a free season mode with prizes of up to two and a half thousand pound seasons mode is based on 34 game weeks and only your best five are counted at the end of the season there are tons of stats and analytics available inside the app to help you choose your team and give you the best chance of winning if the money and the gameplay wasn't enough to tempt you how about Jurgen Klopp being an ambassador for speech this season if it's good enough for Mr Klopp it's good enough for me you must be 18 years or over to play use our link in the description below to download speech and win money with your football knowledge today I want to do this a little bit differently rather than me speaking about you know what's going on at the club from a footballing perspective I thought I'd look at the media and ask why the media seem to want to pile in on Liverpool whenever we're going through any type of a downward period and by this I mean stories like the ones that have been doing the round this week saying that Jurgen Klopp's already written Arthur off already only he's in, only in the door other stories like we've seen about Darwin as well that Jurgen Klopp has already deemed that Darwin's the biggest mistake he's made since coming to the club and that they're already regretting that decision I just don't understand why the need for these pieces are there it is the epitome of piling on when the club are going through any type of hardship and it makes me wonder at times is there actually a media narrative out there that is pro some clubs and anti other clubs I guess the true answer to that is it depends what section of the media you're looking at um, and what way leaning they are or maybe the, the people that write the pieces are or the people that make the content for video or whatever but for me ultimately I've looked around at it over the past year or two and look people are always going to be putting I can see the comments or see them already in the back of my mind people say oh Liverpool fan feels like they're being victimised or Liverpool fan uh, thinks the world's against them I don't really think that but I do think there's certainly a narrative that likes to pile in on clubs and in this case it's Liverpool when they're going through somewhat of an iffy period now look let's start from the start here Darwin Nunes I made a video or many videos last year when Jaden Sancho was going through a, a difficult start to his United career saying I don't get this I don't get why people are calling him a flop because he's only in the door at United every player deserves at least a season to come through and Jaden Sancho doesn't become a bad footballer overnight and the same can be said about Darwin so when he came into Liverpool Football Club immediately he played what I think two 20 minute spells or something games didn't score and the knives are out already then he bangs in a couple and then they switch over the Haaland and they start having a pop of Haaland some people in the media and asking you know is he the right fit for Manchester City will he struggle to adapt I just don't get it it's nonsense and it goes against what we want people to do in our sport which is give players time give people time to settle in and be a bit more understanding of their personal situations as well so from darwin's perspective we've got a young man who's moved countries yet again and has moved many times during his young career and is coming to a new city and a new style of football a new manager new teammates new culture new everything new language and people are trying to write him off already does anyone out there honestly believe that Jurgen Klopp, even if it was true, even if Klopp did feel that they'd made a mistake and I don't think he has, even if it was true, does anyone really think that those leaks are going to genuinely come from Liverpool's really tight-knit bunch of coaches all the way to the media in Spain or wherever it was the story originated from? It's nonsense and it's just put out there to cause division, to get clicks and to rile Liverpool fans up. Because we know Liverpool fans, United fans, Arsenal fans, probably the more active ones on social media. And you know if you write a story about Liverpool Football Club or Manchester United it gets traction, it gets clicks, and it gets people talking about it. So it seems to be at times, the more outlandishly stupid stuff that you can say or write, the more traction it gets. And that's, it's counterintuitive to me for the sport. It's very easy for the people writing the articles and stuff, of course, because they want the clicks on their site. But there's no integrity there for me. 
it's nonsense and it needs to be called out more. And look, I get that people will once again say there's a Liverpool fan looking after Liverpool stuff. And it is in this case, yes. But my stance has always been the same on a lot of stuff, including VAR and referees. It impacts us now, but it will impact you in the future. So rather than stories being about players who are actually underperforming for a very long time, they're trying to write off players who are only in the door. Darwin Nunes isn't Erling Haaland. He isn't. Nor did we think he was going to be. But he will be a very fine player for this football club and he will take time to settle in. So look, I don't for one minute believe that Jurgen Klopp has looked at Darwin, somebody who he's been massively positive about before he came to the club, credited him with Benfica, spoke about his admiration for the player, spoke about how we can utilise him at Liverpool when he comes in or when he came in and then all of a sudden go, actually no, me, my scouts, everybody was wrong. We made a huge mistake. The biggest mistake is not Donald Trump. Like, he's not coming out there with it. It's the biggest mistake ever. Biggest mistake in the history of the club. That's not Klopp. Nor is it any of his coaching staff. So I think the Darwin stuff is particularly embarrassing. But then to double down, like this week, we'd seen Guillaume Balaguer have to come out and rubbish the story about Arthur and saying that Liverpool's coaches have been impressed with Arthur's determination to get up to speed, to get up to fitness. He played in the under-21s today. I believe he played the entire 90 minutes in that game and look you couldn't write him off already so I don't get it I don't get the need to try and put this narrative out there to pile pressure back on Klopp because if what you want to do is try and cause divisions within Liverpool squad and their coaches or their fan base you're probably going to do the exact opposite if anything you'll push these guys together to form a siege mentality and say look screw everybody else let's stick together and get through this and yes Liverpool have gone through a sticky start to the season no argument yes we probably could have done more in the transfer market especially around midfield but I just don't understand this narrative or what it needs to do or what it hopes to accomplish. It's not going to attract people to the city, to this, to this league, to the culture if we're constantly vilifying people. I don't know what it is about some parts of the media and their want for trampling all over everybody and kicking people when they're down, but it needs to stop. Arthur has only come to the club. He's arrived on loan. Everybody with half a brain cell knows that he didn't get much game time at Juventus. He needs to up his fitness. Klopp spoke about this, the reason he played today as well. And he will have a limited role to play this season, probably as somebody to give cover for Thiago, but certainly somebody who has an opportunity. And he needs to try and grasp that opportunity with both hands. And look, I'm open to the prospect that maybe Jurgen Klopp doesn't see Arthur as the long-term solution in midfield, but he was brought in on loan. So again, I just don't understand it. And I feel like it's it's a constant Always, like if when Jurgen Klopp speaks about the fact that we had to play games in two different continents within 24 hours of each other a while back, there was some stuff about that as well. Jurgen Klopp disrespecting competitions, it just needs to stop. Stop trying to invent scenarios, stop trying to invent divisions that aren't there, and just comment on the football. If Liverpool aren't playing well or somebody hasn't put in a good performance, then the media are fully entitled to write about that. But this lazy clickbait, lying, nonsense type of journalism from some serious publications, I feel it's embarrassing and I feel it needs to stop. And I don't see any problems at Liverpool Football Club outside of our poor form, which I believe will be put right. And I think Jurgen Klopp will get the lads firing in all cylinders. So look, it's not really a rant as such today. It's just a topic that I've noticed over the past couple of weeks that's wound me up. But let me know if there's been any stories around Liverpool for you that has wound you up. And this is before we get into the like, Bon Lahore nonsense and some of the stuff he comes out with on TalkSport. But, you know, that's for another day. But right now, I don't believe there are huge problems at Liverpool Football Club. There are problems, absolutely. But I don't think Arthur and I don't think that Darwin are those problems. And I don't like the narrative from the media. So let me know your thoughts as always. I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. And... um I'm going to be back after the international break for some more uh, Liverpool videos. I'm sure I'll make some during the international break, but I am heading off away for a week next Wednesday. So uh, maybe limited between now and the end of the international break. But I want to hit that 150k if we can before I head away. So do hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and of course, let me know your thoughts on it. Do you think I'm re reading this situation incorrectly? Do you think other clubs are far worse affected than Liverpool with regards to media manipulation or media stories? Because the media is a powerful thing and they can create narratives for or against managers, for or against clubs, for or against specific players. And I feel at the moment they're taking some cheap shots at Liverpool. That's my take on that anyway. Talk to you guys soon. Much love. Bye-bye.